All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Kino Trice Show. This is the live edition. I have my first interview for today, and in the studio with me, I have Mia Jackson. What's up, Mia? Hi, Kino. Oh, it is great to have you here. You looking good? <laughs> Thanks. I try. So, so we're going to get straight to the stuff. All right, I'm ready. Mia's an Atlanta comic. I've been doing comedy in Atlanta for like four years now, and the whole time... I've seen Mia Jackson, and I've seen Mia Jackson blossom into something very, very big. She's knocking down doors, uh, kicking them in, actually. So, knock, knock, knock. <laughs> so, Mia, we're going to get started. Where are you from originally? Kino. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, the Georgia. The town where you get beat down. Beat down? Yeah, or the, or the Fountain City, which is probably the legitimate real nickname of the Okay, city. what is it? Like a huge fountain? No, you know what? I don't know. I've been asking for years, but like uh, it's allegedly because it's a bunch of fountains in our downtown area, but I don't I don't know. Oh, really so, so if somebody was to travel to Columbus, Georgia, <laughs> they were like, oh, I just got to see the fountains. It ain't, like, it ain't no fountain to see. It ain't no fountain <laughs> where you can be like, ooh, that's a definitive fountain that says this is Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> if anything, I think more people know about Columbus because it's right next to a military base, Fort Benning. So everybody oh, well, knows about Fort Benning. Wait a minute. I might be off of my geography here. Isn't Columbus the capital? Of... Uh, I don't know. Okay, you the, know Atlanta is the capital. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Columbus <laughs> had some significance. And it was like a... Maybe it's the military. You know, you live in Atlanta. You I know. know. I know. Okay. <laughs> I might edit that out, but you might, you might. take that out. Take yeah. That out. <laughs> but anyway, so um, how early did you know that you wanted to be a comedian? Like, where did that come from? Well, I don't know if I would say early, but well, I, I was fascinated with stand up really young, like real, real young. Like I can remember whatever it, whatever the precursors were to Comedy Central, because I know it used to be two networks and they combined or something, but yeah. I used to watch the shows uh, that were on there all the time. And I can remember being like 11 or 12 and I would call my cousin every day and be like, oh, did you hear this person's joke? And I would be repeating people's jokes and we'd be like, oh, but then this person said this thing, this person said this thing. And so that's when I started like kind of loving stand up and then, I remember in high school, you know, when Def Jam was at his, his high school. Oh, watching yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every week. And I would come back, repeat the jokes, and I can remember being 14, having a conversation with one of my uh, best friends at the time. And she was like, well, how come we on the band bus? When you say stuff, she was like, she said, people laugh, but when I say stuff, they don't. <laughs> and I was so arrogant, even as a 14-year-old, and I was just like, because I have better comedic timing than you. Right, right. So, you suck. I'm funny. <laughs> right. I'm like, okay. what made me say that about <laughs> You know, at 14. So, yeah. Now, for me, I my um, my dad used to let me listen to Red Fox and all that stuff. To uh, you know, my mom would be pissed off. Like, why are you letting him listen to it? He's seven, eight years old. He shouldn't <laughs> be listening to that. But um, yeah, that's cool. I, I definitely get it. So, okay, you were watching the clean stuff because yeah. And I mean, I can remember my parents having parties and listening to Richard Pryor records and stuff. But right. they would send me upstairs and they'd be like, you can't. You cannot listen to this stuff. Right, and then they turn it up loud enough where you can hear yeah, it anyway. Yeah, yeah. So they wouldn't let me listen to it. Okay, okay. So you listen, you watch, you watched it on TV. Watched it on so TV. So what about? I know there's got to be somebody funny in your family. Now I hear you talking about your dad all the time. So I kind of figured that there was somebody like that was the comedian in the family. Like, okay, you're emulating him. Is it your dad? You know, it's, yeah, yeah, a little, yeah. Because my and and both my parents are funny, but in a. Like my mom is a very subtle funny. So growing up, she was all, I mean, she still to this day, she's very straightforward, very, she's an HR person. You know, I know how to talk about things. I can be very blah, blah, blah. She'll say okay. some old slick, underhanded, undercutting comments, but my dad is just like loud, boisterous. My mom even told me, she said back in the day, she was like, he even kind of looked like Richard Pryor. He had a little <laughs> thick mustache and he used to make everybody laugh. And he just, but he's always kind of been that person like joking and just being loud and out of control. Oh, okay, okay. Like my dad. My dad is short and funny. Funny. <laughs> He's five three with heels on. Is he but, five three? Your yeah, dad my is dad. My dad is a midget. <laughs> I didn't know he was a tiny man. <laughs> yeah, my my grandma used to be like, when you were born, baby, I would pray you would grow and not be short <laughs> like your damn daddy. <laughs> Wait, how tall are you? I am roughly six feet. Very roughly. Very roughly. And you know, I think you're lying because I'm six feet. Oh, you know? uh, we probably we'll stand up after we go. <laughs> 
But I am roughly six feet. I might be five eleven and three fourths. And his dad is five three. That's he's great. five three. Yes, he might be shorter than that. Um, you know, they get they shrink yeah, when they get older. They so he's, they he's he's close to seventy. So yeah, he's a short dude. Crazy as hell too. But you I know. mean, if you have lived a life being five three, you'd probably be angry with some people. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Napoleon Napoleon syndrome for sure. It's for sure. Now, will you do comedy in front of your parents, especially you know when you're doing? kind of risque material uh, or a little bit of cursing. You know, you know let me be honest with you. I, I do comedy in front of my parents a lot. They've seen it now. Uh, I remember back in the day, I did a show in my hometown and um, I had a joke where I used to talk about, uh, and I still do it occasionally, like if I'm, if I need to uh, stretch out my set, but there's this joke where I talk about, I'm not talking about sex and the joke. And then, I mean, that's really not my set. You know how, you know, my mm -hmm. material. So I, um, I was doing this joke where I'm just like, oh, blah, blah, you turn around and you grab balls and you squeeze and blah, 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 blah. And then the first time I did it from my parents, I was just like, oh, God, I just did a squeeze and ball jokes. You know, in front of my parents, I was like, my mom was going to kill me. I was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So then the next time I come back, like six months later, my mom calls me and she's like, um, are you going to do the ball joke again? Because <laughs> I, that's one of my favorites. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow. oh, wow. I don't want the ball joke to be your favorite joke. So I was like, how did you find she, out about yeah, balls? We right. never talked about balls. Yes. Like, you shouldn't yeah. be knowing about balls. I just I did a penis picture joke in front of them recently. And I did, and I tried to avoid eye contact. And they were right <laughs> in the front row. And I was like, did somebody send me a pic? Right. right. Ah! Oh, wow. Ah. Oh, <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Well, okay, so in a comics career, like the first two years are, are pivotal. Like right. that's kind of a make or break you. Like will mm -hmm. you continue or will you go home? How were your first two years in uh, comedy? Well, you know what? My first two years were pretty, uh, they were pretty decent. Like uh, when I started, I remember I started in August of 2002. And when I started, Within the first three weeks, I did a college show that had like 900 people. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. so so my yeah. so so my start was a lot different from other people's. Like I started, I mean, I was doing open mics, and then my friend, she was, I still lived in Athens at the time. My friend was, she worked um, on the student activities board, and so she was like, oh, well, they're letting people audition to go open up for RNSJ. So oh, wow. if you want to audition? And I was just like, ah, sure, I'll try. And I was just thinking, there ain't no way I'm gonna get this. But I go to the audition, and this was also horrible in the audition. Back then when I was more flexible, I used to do splits during my set. <laughs> but uh, I ripped up my pants in the set. And so I'm still yes. doing an audition, panties just hanging out. And I had to stand there with my legs crossed the whole time. And I'm just like, yeah, that ain't even a joke. And they were like, oh, you so funny. I'm like, no, 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 my pants really are <laughs> hanging out right now. But they they said that I got it. And so, but yeah, three, I don't mean doing comedy three weeks. And I'm just like, I gotta go do this show. Wow, so how much time did they put they you They had me do like, they split it up with me and another guy. So we both did like, Probably maybe five minutes each, something like that. But it was enough to where I got a standing ovation. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. And then after that, I was just like, where do I go from here? I'm like, I went all the way, way up. And then, um, but after that, I just kept doing open mics. And then there was a period within the first two years where um, I didn't get on stage probably for like six months. Or I didn't travel for six months because I was poor and I didn't have any money to get my tires fixed. Or something. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. But I mean, I, I know like five minutes, like when you start now, like five minutes is an eternity. Like what in the hell am I gonna talk about for five, five minutes? Like, minutes. are you serious? Did, you, did he say five? Five, like I do five? whole minutes. And that, wow. In this field, it's a long five And minutes. to pull it off and get a standing ovation, that's great. I, my first five minutes is, woo! <laughs> Wait, so where were you? Where were you when you did your first um, Actually, the very first time I did comedy in front of people was um, at a contest. I went to a contest. I don't know why I did it, but it was kind of one of those contests where they had a panel. It was a contest, I think, the winner out of Atlanta, go to Vegas, whatever. That's the first time I met Trey Black, because Trey Black actually won that contest. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, it was at the, no, it was I, Laugh Across America or something. I, I don't think it was that name. But, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. so. Because um, Trey went, yeah. So I, I, went, <laughs> I went into a room, and well, first of all, they set all the comedians in a room, and everybody was introducing themselves, and nobody knew me. I guess everybody was local. And they were like, well, who are you, whatever. And uh, by then, back then, I went by KD. I was like, oh, I'm KD. Blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So Trey Black was there and he was like, well, how long have you been doing comedy? I was like, well, actually, this would be my first time. And he looked at me like, what? Oh, give me your number. He was like, I got to see how this goes. So 
I, I went in front of the panel, so um, I did my jokes. I think, you know, when you're a new comic, your, your first jokes are always like, you know, shock jokes. So <laughs> right, maybe I, I, did it, I did the shock jokes as clean as I could. I, I think I was talking about something about losing weight, and I lost weight to make make my penis look bigger in the mirror. Something crazy, whatever. So, But um, after I did my little three-minute set, they were like, that was actually good and you've never done comedy before i was like no and they were like oh it was great it's not good enough for this contest but you're gonna be okay <laughs> was encouraging yeah. right right so um because you know at the beginning you you just say anything right you right, talk right. about nothing right you know, just, <laughs> uh, yeah so and you know i was i was sweating bullets when i went and i was like wow how did That's i end hilarious. up here but <laughs> so I, my start came from a contest so with that being said the infamous question <laughs> No. When was your first time? And you you seen my first time, my worst time, I should say. When's your oh, worst time? Okay. And you've seen your mind, but we're gonna talk about, about yours because oh. this is your interview. We're, we're talking about Mia Jackson. So what is the worst time you ever had on stage? Oh well the one that stands out the most. Now I'm gonna get in my dramatic voice. There was, <laughs> so and I hate I hate to say that you have to you have to dice up comedy, but you, I mean, that's pretty much what everybody does. There's mainstream, alternative, urban, all that kind of stuff. Right. And I am mostly a mainstream act, and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not right, right. I'm cool with that. That's just who I am, you know, and that's not to say that I can't work everywhere, but that is mainly my audience. So I somehow got involved in this contest for a magazine that I shall not name. And if anybody is smart enough, they can Google all this stuff. But uh, so I got recommended by this one agency, and they were just like, hey, you know, this contest, they want to do this thing, they like you, they, they want you to be a part of this big time competition that's sponsored by this really big time company. Right, so I'm right, like, right. yeah, 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 I was like, sure. Here's my thing, I'm thinking when I send the video, I'm like, they ain't ever gonna pick this. I'm like, this is not, man, this ain't urban, they ain't gonna want this video. Lo and behold, they're like, you're one of the eight. You're <laughs> one of the eight for Atlanta. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. So I'm one of the eight for Atlanta, right? So I'm going, so at this point, you're supposed to be telling people to go vote for you online. You're supposed to, and they're supposed to cut it down to the final four. I ain't right. tell nobody. Oh, like, I ain't wow. tell nobody. I made a, I even have a 30 second video that I had to make because they wanted us to do all these promos. And they were like, you know, tell them why you should win. So I'm making this really great video. And I'm just like, blah, 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 blah doing all this stuff. So then, uh, and I'm just thinking, there's no way. Then the next thing I know, they go, you're in the final four. And I was yes, like, no! Yes. no. <laughs> was the first time I've heard somebody advancing and like, <laughs> right. no, I don't want to like, advance. Don't Stop want it now. Advance. I was like, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> and then, uh, and I and really, I'm going to just say, I psyched myself out real bad. I mean, it was, because I kept going, they're not going to like me, they're not going to like me. And I realized, you know, and, and I, you know, I remember taking this improv class once and the instructor said, he was like, the one thing you always have to re remember before you go on stage, he said, is that your job is to make people feel good. And he was like, but you have to feel good to make people to feel good. Right. And and I didn't feel good beforehand and like backstage, like, cause I mean, it, you know, everybody all kind of knew each other and I'm just kind of sitting there like. Oh yeah, that's the worst, that's the worst, so. Like, I don't know anybody and there's people who are, you know, locally well known who are looking at me like, but who are you? Right. How'd you get on this <laughs> contest? And I go out there and here's the, and, and, I, and I could be exaggerating because it's not as bad as I'm saying, but in front of the people, like it was, like my set was actually okay. The set right. was not bad at all because later on when I went on Instagram and Twitter, it was right. almost half and half. There were a lot of people being like, "Oh, this bitch is right. funny." <laughs> they were like, "Oh, who let her on the stage?" And the other people were like, "I don't know why people are treating this girl like this." They were like, "This girl is freaking amazing." Right. So you got like right. this. You know, two different, right. two different but, factions. Yeah, but we never focus on the good right, stuff. We never we focus, focus on, on the, the good bad. stuff. Yeah. And I was just right. like, everybody hates me, and I was just like so distraught, so bent out of shape. Then one of the um, judges for the contest was a local uh, person. Um, I'll tell you who it is offline, but yeah. she was trying to, she was trying to clown me, and she was trying to say all this horrible stuff. Oh wow! And um, and then and the guy that was hosting the show was just kind of like, like he's whispering to me as I'm going off. He's like, man, I love your material. Like right, I don't right. even know, like I don't even understand what's what's happening right now. And and then it came across like I wasn't. It came across like I was not experienced. It came across, um, and one of the big people behind the contest, he was like. Oh, I mean, you could tell that she's a newer comic, and I'm just like, right. I no, she's like, not. I've been doing this for well, nine, ten years, well, you know? to the people listening, it's, it's 
as a comedian, it's really important that you show confidence. It doesn't matter right. what you're talking about. If you don't show confidence, the audience is kind of like rabbit dogs. They they feed on it. So if you show any fear, I've seen people whose material just flat out not funny, but the fact they show confidence right. and no fear, they make it work. They so with a bunch if, of confident garbage. Right, you know? right. So if you wasn't yeah. feeling it when you got oh. on stage, then it's oh. definitely going to show. So I, You know, and I just, it was a, dis- I mean, it was a disaster. I mean, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. I'll say this. It was not a disaster for you make it to the final four. That is not a disaster. That is, that is, some of us can only hope, like, you know. Yeah, it was, you know, but it was a, and it was, but what was so funny, like, later on people, I remember I ran across some gossip blog where they were like, oh, you know, there were four comedians that did this thing. And like no one ever named me, so right, I was just right. like, yes, right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't remember your name. Yeah, it's okay. I like, they don't know who I am. So, well, that that wasn't that terrible. It wasn't but I terrible. mean, you know, I know it could be. It could I almost be. fought somebody one time. On show, <laughs> but that was a bad situation. Oh wow. Well, let's talk about it. You brought it up. Hey, fight. <laughs> Let's make this the, uh, the the real house comics <laughs> this, of Atlanta. This, this was early. I was I probably been doing comedy about a year. I was still in Athens. And there was this place, it was this restaurant, I think it was called Wild Wings or something, but whatever it was, the way it was set up, you walked in on the first level, then you went up the steps. Right. But then when you go up the steps, on the second level, there was a stage, but then the stairwell, then the rest of the spot. So people were coming up the stairs, you know, as while you're on stage and there was a band booked the same night. So the band right. kept playing real loud. And at one point I was hosting the show, so I just started singing over the band. Cause it was like, every time I started to talk, <laughs> the band would just start playing. So I'd be like, it's almost like they know, like they can hear me. So as I started doing this, there's this drunk lady in the back who was just like, ugh. And then she's just like, boo. Wow. And the lady starts wow. booing and then she's just like, get off stage, get off stage. And, and I was so young and comedy that I was just like, you know, I didn't know better to ignore it. And then it was almost like, um, it always, because I love horror movies, so like, and, and Michael Myers, you know, he kind of gets that thing in his head, kind of turns to the oh, side, yeah, like, yeah. It's, about, it's to about to be somebody. all right, right. And that's how my head and my friend said she saw me afterwards be like, and I, I've, I've seen you. I've you seen, seen you that. annoyed when a, uh, when a heckler, so the young men straight out of uh, Columbus, ready to uh, throw down, uh, huh? Boy, did you saw me get, um... Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you. You, you you've always handled a heckler with class, though. With I class like and you. elegance. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. with class and elegance. So. But, but yes, I took... Actually, so this lady did all this stuff. I skipped. I jumped over the steps and then took off running because I was about to go punch her in the face. Wow. But my friends, fortunately, were halfway in between me and the lady. So they stopped me and then they were just like, what are you doing? Like you can't go punching people because they booing. Right, so, locked up in Athens is not right. a good thing. No. Unless you're an athlete, you'll get out the next day. But oh, the know, same that's night. a whole, yeah. whole different story. And I guess I'll actually uh, talk about my worst moment so far. You were there. There was an unnamed um, popular gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that night. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And surprisingly, that was my worst because after that, I learned, I learned to stay in my lane. I had no business getting up on that show. But you know, he, but wouldn't it wouldn't it a thing where he was just like, hey, I just want people. Yeah, on the yeah, show. I want people yeah. on the show. So I should have um, I should have bowed out because I was just fresh back in the game, and um, I got up there, and you know, it went horribly. And I'll never forget this because after I got off, and you know, they didn't really boo, but they made that. Uh, they were quiet. They, they, no, they that. made that sound from uh, from Apollo. That Rrr! somebody was in the oh. back going. Rrr! I was like, oh, yeah, I was backstage, so I didn't know that. Oh, was, yeah, so stab me now. So I got off stage, and I never forget when I got back to the green room, Mia was like, it's okay. You might as well just come do the second show. I was like, hell no. <laughs> I went home, I cried a little bit in the car. But <laughs> you did not. Got, <laughs> you didn't stay to do the second show? No, I ain't stay. Uh, I had to get out of there. And um, there was one comedian there, Ice Cream, a comedian named Ice Cream. I don't uh-huh. know if you're familiar with him. Uh, yeah, I know who he is. But he was there. And um, he gave me some encouraging words when I was leaving. And then um, I happened to do a, a show the next week, just an open mic, and he was there. And I was like, what's up? I met you last week. He was like, yeah, because everybody remembers the dude who ate it at the such and such show. Yeah. And um, he was like, well, I'm glad to see you back. He was like, you know, he was like, it's just, you know, I could tell you knew. He was like, <laughs> yeah. he was like, I could take your same jokes. Because he was like, I watched your set. He was like, I could take your same jokes and murder with it. It's just about confidence. And, you know, he gave me the old pep talk. But, yeah. <laughs> No, but now that you say that, though, that actually reminded me of a, I was about to say, I thought the other experience was the worst. I did a show with that same person 
Ken uh-huh. Burns. Oh yeah, you did tell and me about that. That was probably the worst time I'd ever had. Oh, on stage. The start, they, no. they brought yeah. me in to feature, and they had to bump me down wow. to MC because the person that was MC in the show, he was a hometown favorite. So you know. At, oh yeah, at, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he out there hollering and yelling at the crowd. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later, but he was just. You know, of course, and everybody's eating all that stuff up, and I'm coming out like, hey guys, you like <laughs> Who wants gummy bears and unicorns? Oh, wow. Who like glitter? You know, and they're just like, ah! Get you know what? It is always hard to follow like the hometown hero, because I did a show last year in Cincinnati, and there was a, a local chick there, and she happened to be a lesbian. Shout out to my lesbians in Cincinnati. But um, <laughs> she, 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 she did her thing, and then at the end of her set, Mind you, the audience was half full of lesbians, so they, she already had the audience to see her. And at the end of her set, she pulls out a dildo, oh. and the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> crazy, like, just <laughs> laugh for like three minutes. She hadn't even said nothing. They just still going crazy. And she's walking around just flinging the dildo, and they just... And I had to come after that, like, you can't, what? You can't follow a dildo. It's what very difficult. It's right. very difficult. Right, so um, I came out. My set was mediocre after that, because I... I was like, what do I do with the dildo? I ain't have no props, right? Right. The only thing was to get naked, and I wasn't doing that. We probably got kicked out of the venue. But it's not right. Yeah, hometown heroes. It's hard to follow. It's very difficult. So, So, um, I'm going to take this opportunity right now. We're going to take a small break so we can uh, refresh our drinks and um, get back in the studio with Mia Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in a few minutes. Fucking nickels. Most likely I'ma die with my fingers on the zipper. I've been sleeping outside all night with my nickels. I can't drink no gin if I can't get nickels. My nickels, my nickels. One nickel, two nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My motherfucking nickels. My nickels, my nickels. I love the nickels. My nickels, my nickels. Miss Jackson. First things first, I count all my nickels. My black tooth crack when I chew on my nickels. You looking for some beef to come brawl my nickels. You sell it too high, I need all my nickels. No nickels broke, broke. Some nickels clink, clank. Drop nickel on the walk by a jock that don't blink. That's my nickel back up. He's here to buy a laptop. I gotta stack it right if my nickels wanna stack up. The silver half a dime, no, that ain't my nickel. The center of a crime, no, that ain't my nickel. The flying eagles. City. Yeah, that's my nickel. Back in 1858, yeah, that's my nickel. Puked my lunch fish to the left of my nickel. On my first breeze pass with my nickels. Slip your mother's nickel face down for my nickels. A two-sided nickel? Flip another I nickel. I got a fanny pack full of motherfucking nickels. Most likely I'ma die with my fingers on the zipper. I've been sleeping outside all night with my nickels. I can't drink no gin if I can't get nickel. My nickels, my nickels. Five cents a piece, nickel. My nickels, my nickels. A little pocket change, nickel. My nickels, my nickels. God bless you, my nickel. My nickels, my nickels. I'm homeless, my Jamaica, bitch. No, I'm king of the nickel town, you see. It's got two words for you, trust and liberty. liberty. It That's was me right. and three nickels tipping on behalf of me. Ooh. Then we used to split fireball, pistol, and apple bees. Me and my round ass nickel coexisted. Co-existed. Tell me, get the growl and pour some gravy on my brisket. Yeah. Just know I spot silver long way, my Ow. nickel. So when I see you in the hallway, my Ow. nickel. Step that far right by your face, my nickels. Mm. Stick that far right to first base with my nickels. Excuse me. Me and Orlando riding hungry, biting like them chips. I bought a Whopper, bought a Cola, hot pad, a go I dick. got a fanny pack full of motherfucking nickels. Most likely I'ma die with my fingers on the zipper. I've been sleeping outside all night with my, my nickels. nickels. I can't drink no gin if I can't get nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My hey, nickels, my brother, nickels. Uh, my nickels, my nickels. My motherfucking nickels. My nickels, my nickels. I love the nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My nickels got a tail. My nickels got a face. My nickels added up. Did a reason I ate. My nickels got a house. It's the president's place. Oh, my nickels worth five. My nickel exchange rate is the U.S. Mint. My nickel, my nickel. Wiping off a nickel's grit. My nickel, my nickel. I trades a quarter, bitch. Five nickels, my nickels. If you ain't nickel rich, then you 
you ain't my nickel, my nickel, my nickel. Can you spare a nickel? Jefferson, my nickel. Third president, yeah, he's on my nickel. Shout it, seeing me and can't believe these nickels. But we didn't need a room, cause I came in my uh, nickels. Uh, uh. My nickels, my nickels. I need your piggy bank, cause I'm shy to nickels. And I'm all about my bitches from the apple pie, bitches. I buy with my nickels. I got a fanny pack full of motherfucking nickels. Most likely I'ma die with my fingers on the zipper. I've been sleeping outside all night with my nickels. I can't drink no gin if I can't get nickels. My nickels, my nickels. His nickels, her nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My motherfucking nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My nickels, my nickels. My nickels, my nickels. All right, we're back off our break. Hopefully, I played some music during the break. This is uh, <laughs> this is pre-edit, but um, back with uh, Mia Jackson in the studio. We're having a blast. We had to talk about a few things we couldn't talk on air, you know, um, during the break. So maybe we'll uh, we'll do a post-show uh, interview and we'll put those names in. But um, back with Mia. Mia Jackson. Mia Jackson is up and coming. Well, not up and coming anymore. She's here. Um, She's done shows with some pretty impressive people. So, Mia, why don't you do some name dropping? And I'll start with the first name of who I know. Um, She recently opened for David Chappelle. That was last year, right? Yeah, last Last year. year. It was a year after the horrible show that I had where I was about to cry. Yeah. So, a year later. um, But, yeah, I got open for Dave Chappelle. I did uh, three shows with him last year at the Tabernacle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was pretty awesome. And I wanted to get tickets to those shows, but they were all sold out by the time I looked at it. Ridiculous. But, yeah, it was a... Oh, I I know his audience. Great experience. Yeah. Oh, so so we we hang out with Dave now? Is, no, no, we don't hang out with Dave. <laughs> no, I mean he, I mean, he, I, mean, I got to meet him, but he was really nice. He was real, real nice, super cool. He, uh, you know, you would think with somebody that big, you know, they would, you know, they don't have to. I mean, everybody should be nice. They don't have to be. You know right, what I mean? right. And right. um, but backstage he was just like, yeah, he was like, well, who? He was like, I saw you walking around. He was like, who, who are you? And all because he got there late, and I was like, I am, I open <laughs> early. He's like. Oh, come here, girl. He's like, give me a hug. And right, he's right. just like, why are you being so quiet? And I'm like, you're Dave Chappelle. I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying. Right, right. right. But now nah, he was real cool. Like, he was very cool. And, and a lot of people don't know this. Um, they assume that when you get on a show with a big name that you're hanging out and you're buddies. But it's such the opposite from right. the stories I hear that, you know, sometimes some headliners won't even speak to you, won't even acknowledge you, even though they watch you and they know oh, yeah. you're on their show. So, yeah. Um, to the folks out there, so if you hear somebody say they're open for somebody, um, it's probably safe to assume that they they're not buddies. You're right. They ain't talked to them, and any, any pictures that you see, just assume that they they ask just like a fan. Hey, right. Okay, <laughs> Can I get a picture? picture um, I ain't you. jacking you or nothing, but uh. Yeah, but it's yeah, and it's and I've, I've met some people, but to me though, you know, I haven't been a host, haven't been a feature, all this different stuff. Uh, you know, and I do close some shows and stuff now, but I've always met nicer headliners. Features a lot of times when I've when I've been in the MC spot, right. those have been the ones who were kind of like, oh, I'm out of LA, I'm out of right. New York, right. and I, and so I'm like, nobody cares, right. nobody cares at all. So the hell what? I shut up. And, and I know actually last Sunday you got to open for Earthquake. I did, yeah, yeah I sure pretty did. Pretty impressive, yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah. So Earthquake, Dave Chappelle, any anybody um, that? It's been so many people, but I um, early this year I got to open for Amy. Amy Schumer, you know, she's okay, yeah, Amy Schumer. Central, so right, I right. got open for her, but um, and I'd actually met her years ago at the punchline, just hosting shows, and then she was just like, You're a real comic, I like you, I want you to host the rest of the weekend. I'm like, okay. Oh, cool, and so because yeah. anyway, when, when we did that, that little TV internet show together, he brought that up, so right, he said on the, on the show that Amy, Sh- did she call you? No, so oh. this is what happened. So like I've, I've no, I, I met her. It's been, ugh, it's been a few years now. But every time when she's come to town, she she, like if she's working at like one time she worked at another club and she's like, is Mia here? Like she asked the guy on the whole that was hosting the show, well, right. go take me to Mia. So like right. I, you know, I've chatted with her and stuff like that. And so she's always like, we gotta work together. We gotta work together. Okay. So um, we were gonna work together in Athens maybe like a year or two ago but the person that was booking the show was an actual crackhead and everything <laughs> fell through. You gotta hate them and crackheads. So, um, so this time when I saw she was coming to town I just wanted to go to the show period. And I was like hey I, said, I haven't seen you in ages. I was like I just want to go. I said you know are you going to be hanging out? And she's like well, do you just want to do a spot? And I was like of course. Oh, uh, uh, yes. sure. Yeah, I'll right. do a spot. I mean, I'm like, Ugh, right. okay. <laughs> and, but yeah, the freaking Cobb Energy uh, Center. So right, and and you always have to be prepared. And yeah. uh, 
you were prepared and did yeah, the thing. So everybody said I, everybody said that I did well. You know, uh, I, I know you That's did what well. They said. And I I'm always, it. I'm always like Mia. You're <laughs> awesome, even though she be sometimes. Ah, I'm all right. No, you are awesome. I'll go out on a limb, and you know, if I'm friends with other female comedians in Atlanta scene, um, I apologize. <laughs> but I think Mia Jackson is the most versatile female comedian coming out of Atlanta right now. I, I don't see anybody holding a candle. Although we have great um, female comics here in Atlanta, but just all across the board can pretty much walk in any room and tear the house down. Uh, Mia Jackson, I'm giving her the nod. The nod in 2014. Nice, the Kino Trice show. <laughs> So, for all the new comics coming out, because you've, you've kind of you've paid your dues and you're out here grinding, what kind of advice would you give to a new upcoming comic who may not be good right now and, you know, <laughs> kind of feeling bad about themselves? Um, and there's a few we can name. But, I don't, <laughs> no, yeah, we don't, right, we don't right, name drop right, no, on the We don't name drop show. on the Kino Trice show. We ain't even named the headliners we right, had our worst show with. Right, but, we only name people. What kind of advice would you give for somebody new and starting? Um... I would say that a lot of it is mental, like a lot of it is real. And you know, I would hear people say stuff like that back then. They were like, shut up. Like, right. <laughs> like shut your mouth. Like, I don't want to hear that. Right. But right. it's, but, but now, now I haven't done it for some time. And he, cause I remember people would give me advice at the beginning. I'd be like, oh, shut up. You just don't want me to be great. Right, right. Why would you <laughs> tell me things like that? But it really is just a matter of how you think about things, the mindset that you're in. But from a technical standpoint, it's just, writing as much as you can right. and then when you write it's editing like how much because if you because sometimes you can write so much stuff and you're like oh all of this is good and it's right. not it's, it's not, not all good right. so it's like it's writing editing going on stage actually listening to that set and, and one of the things that really helped me but it's probably because i'm more of an aud um you know um auditory learner that kind of thing but i would i would, I would record all of my sets not it's good to also see video, but I would just be in a car, stuck in traffic, driving to work, right. listening to my set. Right. And then when you listen to the set, not only does it help you memorize it, but it'll also help you hear where people actually laughed. It'll hear, it'll let you hear, you know, okay, well this thing worked, or oh, was that a groan? Was that an ambient noise? That's not a laugh, so I need <laughs> right. to probably take that out. Right. Or, oh, or even as you're listening to it, let me throw this other line on this joke. Like That's how I ended up growing my set, just by listening to it all the time and I could and I could I can remember the point where I felt like I was like I'm getting better at this because when I would get on stage it just be tight tight right, tight right. And, and and I find that when I write a joke and even though you spend a lot of time writing it and you you swear it's good until right. the audience tells you different a lot of times I find it's, it's arrangement it's how you play mm -hmm. certain parts of the joke certain so words, um, I don't sounds. yeah I, I don't throw jokes away anymore I'll say okay I did it this way it didn't work let me rearrange let me right. put the the end to the front and I yeah. find out that's usually the formula because if you wrote it it's it's probably funny it's probably funny yeah, it's maybe good yeah, sometimes. It's, yeah. <laughs> then sometimes sometimes throw it away yeah because yeah. i remember look, i look back at some stuff i wrote in the notebook and i was like what <laughs> right right what was i talking about how am i talking about hot dogs right, like right. i don't even yeah. know what this oh means. man i found my first notebook um mm -hmm. it needs to be burned matter of fact i want to send it to space i need to talk to nasa or whoever sent another rocket let's just get this off the planet because this was not good not my first enough. notebook is covered with um, pasta from uh, chilies. <laughs> like, I remember wasting it in the notebook and being like, that's probably what should have happened. Right. Like, that's, 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 <laughs> this is the right thing. Right. That's, a, that's a, authenticity right there. This book has been through the through the ringer. This is a real comic uh, right yeah. here. So, so what do you say? There's a lot of comics out here I've been hearing lately. They think you have to starve to be making like... They think that's Man, the part of the dude. Artists. Like, yeah, like, Man. oh, I got to live in my car, you know. I'm gonna tell you this right now that I know some people love the idea of being a starving artist, but I like to eat. So right, I me mean, too, I man. ain't even. I mean, <laughs> I had a job for a long time while I did comedy. It's only been recently that I haven't been. You know that this is all that I've been doing, but I like being able to go. Oh, there's a car outside that right. belongs to me, <laughs> or oh, it has gas in it, or oh, that food is mine. I right, mean, right. and that's what I mean. I know some people. To me. 
if you're gonna struggle, struggle because you're trying to really write, you know, you're trying to work hard, you're trying to get on stage and all that kind of stuff, but you don't, I mean, yeah, you can make adjustments, you can budget and things like that. I mean, and yeah, there are sacrifices that I have to make and I do make those sacrifices, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm an adult, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I need insurance and I can't be living exactly, like this. Exactly, So, So what happens, I mean, you know, especially if you think about like, some people just don't make it. That's just the nature of the <laughs> right. business. Some and now, you, just don't and make now it. you homeless. And now you homeless and you got a track record of not working for 10 years because you were chasing this comedy dream so it's like no you can work you can you can, you can be work. employed you just have to humble you, yourself and be right. like you know sometimes i have to make adjustments that because i mean do you think i wanted to work the entire time no Hell i wanted no, right? days i wanted to be like this job can kiss all my ass <laughs> but i had to do it you know what i'm saying so right. it was more of a i have to say i have to do this like if i'm gonna make this I would look at it like this. I was like, this job is here to help me fund my right, dream. Right. And right. I think that a lot of people, if you want to be more mature about it, just say, this job helps me to fund my dream. This helps me to do what I want to do. Yeah, amen to that, because uh, it takes money, because you don't really make any money, especially the first. I'm just starting to hit the road, yeah. and I'm probably oh, going to take an L on most of these. Oh, you will. I have taken gigs. many. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yes, to all the comedians out there, I want to be comedians, keep a job, because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Yeah, so. Don't you ain't never too good to work I mean <laughs> right and you know if it doesn't work out not saying it won't because you know it's 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 in the it's in the stars for you if you if you start you out believe. you're gonna be successful believe. I'm lying but anyway <laughs> <laughs> well um that's it um Mia where can we find you these days that's a great question yeah. Kino I can be found first of all on my website www.miajackson.com I am also on the social medias. I am on Twitter, at Mia Comedy, Instagram, at Mia Comedy. And if you go to my fan page on Facebook, it will be facebook.com backslash comedian Mia Jackson. Comedian Mia Jackson and at Mia Comedy on Twitter and In Instagram. Instagram. I am not on Instagram yet. I, you I, should get on there. I, I think I'm getting old. I no, think, get uh, on there. I, I can I, barely I, keep up with Facebook, to be honest. I was it for a long time. So Instagram is mainly just, just pictures, pictures. Pictures, so... I don't want people to see me yet. I don't, I don't know. Take pictures of stuff. Take pictures of this room. Be like, look at the... In the in oh, the, yeah, in yeah. The, in, in the, the studio. Lab. Kino Trice lab. lab. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. About to drop this hot 16. You right. know <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, cool. It has been a pleasure. Thanks, Kino. And you... I'm, I'll am i be glad to say that Mia is my first guest. And this is going to be a classic. Y'all going to be playing this back forever. Like, <laughs> remember back when? When Mia's, um, you know, got her own uh, Mia Jackson show on Comedy Central and a household name. I could be like, yo, I interviewed her. What's up? Kino in the house. Um, I'm glad y'all listened. And until next time, uh, y'all be cool. I'm Kino Trice. And I'm Mia Jackson. Peace out. Bye.